In order to save dying children in an Alaskan town, a man and his dog Togo must run through a harrowing storm to deliver a serum. Welcome back to Recap Spot. Today we'll be recapping the 2019 adventure drama film Togo. The film opens on Leonard Sapala as he drives his team of dogs across the snow and shouts commands to Togo, his lead dog. They pass by a herd of caribou, and Togo gives them a glance but doesn't stop running. Sapala seems shocked by this and quietly says, Good dog, as thunder booms in the distance. Good dog. They eventually arrive back in Nome, Alaska, and Sapala is approached by a man named Dan Murphy. Dan tells him that there's been an outbreak of diphtheria, which has lasted over a week and is mostly affecting children. Sapala heads for a meeting between the town officials. At the meeting, Dr. Curtis Welch tells those present about how highly contagious the epidemic is and how it will be a death sentence for most of the children afflicted with it, unless they can get a serum. Unfortunately, the nearest serum is at a far-off town called Fairbanks. And, well, they're ready to put it on the next train to Ninana. And a dangerous snowstorm is looming on the horizon. The mayor, George Maynard, suggests that the serum be flown to them, but Sapala says that the storm is too dangerous. He tells them how Togo had ignored the caribou herd earlier in order to get home faster, meaning he can sense how bad the storm is going to be. The mayor is still set on using a plane to get the serum to Nome, but Jafet Lindbergh, the co-founder of Nome, says that an open cockpit plane with water-cooled engines is not an option with the weather conditions. I'm sorry, I don't understand. With no other options, the men begin asking Sapala how quickly he would be able to make the trip to Fairbanks and back, and he says it's a matter of if. Sapala ends up leaving the meeting without giving them a hard answer on whether or not he'll make the trip. As he prepares to leave, Dr. Welch comes out and asks for a trip to the hospital. Once there, Sapala sees the sick children through the windows of the hospital, and his guilt begins to eat away at him. That night, we see him deep in contemplation as he waxes his sled runners. His wife, Constance, asks him if he's planning on going on the trip, since he's waxing his runners. But Sipala still hasn't decided. So you'll go. While they lie in bed that night, Constance questions whether or not the journey could even be done. She then worries that if Sipala takes Togo with him, then he'll run Togo to his death. And Sipala tells her that if he did go, then he would never survive without Togo. He then tells her to stop worrying, because he hasn't made up his mind yet. The mayor then arrives and tells them it's been confirmed that air delivery is impossible due to the storm. And Sipala goes to sit with Togo by the fire, asking if he has one more race left in him. Sipala prepares to leave, and Constance hides her concern when she says goodbye to him and Togo. As Sipala and his dogs leave Nome, the townsfolk line the streets in support. We watch as Sipala and his team of dogs approach the storm and ride straight into it. The film then cuts to a flashback from 12 years earlier, as Constance tends to Togo when he was just a sickly newborn. Sipala isn't interested in caring for Togo or keeping him alive because he's the runt, but Constance insists on it because he has the heart of a survivor. What does he bring to the breed if he survives? As Togo gets stronger and bigger, he becomes a nuisance who constantly digs and escapes from his kennel while trying to annoy Sapala. Eventually, Sapala gets tired of dealing with Togo and decides to give him away. Constance is upset over losing Togo and watches sadly as a man named Victor comes to take him away. But it isn't long before Victor is coming back to return Togo. Back in the present, Sapala and the dogs are making good progress when Togo all of a sudden comes to a halt when he senses danger. It turns out the group was heading for the edge of a cliff, and Sapala tries his best to break, but the sled continues to slip. He's finally able to stop it with seconds to spare, and he commands Togo to hike up the mountain and pull, managing to get the team and the sled facing the right way. The team arrives at the roadhouse later that night and meets with Amatuk. As Sapala and Amatuk talk, a woman pets and cares for Togo, who is obviously very tired. In another flashback, we see Sapala reinforcing the dog kennels to try and keep Togo from escaping. Once he's finished, Sapalo collects the other dogs for a run, and Togo eagerly looks for a way to escape and join them. After several failed tries, Togo eventually finds a spot he can dig through and begins chasing after Sapala's sled. He eventually catches up and begins to distract the other dogs. They eventually all come to a stop when Togo notices a herd of caribou close by. He darts off for them and the other dogs follow him. The herd runs away and leads them over to a river. Sapala's sled gets overturned and he's thrown into the cold water. Back home, Sapala begins reinforcing the doors of his work shed so he can keep Togo in there. And he angrily tells Constance about what a problem Togo is. Your dog who jumps on me. Togo gets put into the workshop the next time Sapala and his dogs leave for a run. And it doesn't take long for him to figure out a way to escape. Constance hears glass breaking as Togo escapes, 
and laughs to herself when he emerges from the roof and takes off for the sled again. At the roadhouse, Sipala gets ready to leave and tells Amatuk that he's going to take a dangerous shortcut over the top of Norton Sound, which is frozen. Amatuk doesn't think he should do it, but Sipala says it'll save him a day, and he's confident he can make it. We see Sipala give his dogs the command to begin crossing the ice and they all bravely begin running, even as the ice cracks around them. As they cross, Sipala begins shouting a parody of a speech from Shakespeare, where he says that each dog will be remembered. In Nome, the mayor types up a press release and hands it to his assistant, who gets it printed. The press release gets printed across the country, and everybody reads about Sipala's bravery against the oppressive weather conditions. People should know what's happening here. Sipala makes it to the house of a friend named Tulimak, and he stops for a short break. Tulimak says he only likes Sipala because of Togo, and Sipala tells him about how he almost gave Togo away twice. In a flashback, we see Sipala and Constance traveling with Togo to give him to a new owner. Constance isn't happy about it, but Sipala says that Togo is trouble and a waste of time. They make it to the woman who wants Togo, and she says that she wants to use Togo to protect herself from wolves. As Sipala and Constance leave, Togo is seen barking and scratching at the door to try and get to them. Some time later, we see that the new owner is going crazy trying to keep Togo from escaping, and eventually Togo is able to break through a window and make a run for it. Sipala is out with his dogs when he hears Togo barking. Togo comes and disrupts the team before sitting down in front of all the other dogs like the lead. Sipala brings him to the back of the pack next to a dog named Ilsa who growls and snarls at him. Togo doesn't care and ends up licking her face. As they run home, Sipala moves Togo up the line a few times before eventually making him the lead. Good dog. Good dog. When he gets home, Sipala runs up to his wife and tells her that Togo is a fantastic lead dog with the heart of a survivor. Back in Nome, Jafet and the mayor tell Constance that the governor has arranged for relay teams to collect the serum. Constance is concerned because one of the relay members has the serum to give to Sipala but Sipala doesn't know he should be expecting the relay and is likely to miss it. We see Sipala out running with his dogs, unaware of the new plan, and passes by Henry Ivanov, the relay team member with the serums. Henry sees Sipala pass by and begins to run after him, screaming that he has the serum. Just as Henry is about to give up on getting Sipala's attention, Sipala comes over to him on foot. The men shelter overnight, and Henry tells Sipala about what the other teams have been experiencing in the relay. Sipala gets ready to leave the next morning and prepares to make the journey over Norton Sound again. As they race across the cracking ice again, Good job! Sipala has a flashback to when he raced and won against Scotty Allen, the greatest musher of all time. Back in the present, Togo comes to a stop when the ice in front of them completely cracks. Sipala has the dogs go left and they nearly make it to the shore. But at the last second, the ice in front of them breaks away and begins to float away from the shore. Sipala is forced to throw Togo onto the shore and have him pull the whole sled up off the ice. Sipala slips off the sled at the last second and is forced to make the jump himself. The group stops at Amatux again that night and Togo rests. While he rests, the woman there says that Togo is dying, but Sipala can't understand her. In Nome, Constance meets with a musher named Gunnar Kassin, who's going to collect the serum. She gives him two dogs named Fox and Balto to use as lead dogs. Thank you. Sipala prepares to leave Amatux the next day, and Amatux tells him that he cheated death by crossing the sound yesterday because all the ice there has now melted. The journey towards the next roadhouse is treacherous and Sipala asks Togo to get them there safely because he can't see anything. Sipala ends up waking up on his sled after having fallen asleep, and he sees that Togo is also sleeping. Sipala is begging Togo to get up, but it turns out that Togo was able to bring them to the roadhouse. One of the men at the roadhouse grabs the serum to take it to Gunner, who runs it the rest of the way to Nome, while Sipala brings Togo inside to rest. When Gunner arrives in Nome, he gives the serum to the doctor, and a reporter runs out to get his name, and the name of his lead dog, Balto. That man then reports that Balto was actually the hero dog who risked everything for the serum, instead of Togo. Sipala heads home with his dogs, and walks up at the front with Togo. When Sipala finally gets home, he and Constance watch over Togo as he recovers. Oh, it's too much. The whole community visits them the next day to bring them gifts. And that night, one of the children cured by the serum comes to visit Togo and asks if he's dying. Sipala storms out of the house and is racked by grief because he feels like he ran Togo to his death. The next day, Sipala goes for a run with the other dogs. 
and Togo refuses to stay in the house, even though his paw is injured from the trip. He escapes the house and tags along, causing Sapala to stop the run and embrace Togo. Sapala tells Constance that he always thought Togo lived for the sled, but it turns out that Togo lives for him. We see Togo spending his golden years going out for walks with Sapala and siring puppies, eventually creating a breed of sought-after sled dogs known as Sapala Siberians. Togo ends up passing away after some time, and while out on a run, Sapala briefly thinks he sees Togo watching over him from afar. Click one of the videos on screen right now.